at doing the electron configuration of sulfur. Now the thing about every atom is that it contains all the electrons previous to it, which means if I look at sulfur, I can tell that it's in the third period, which means it has three electron rings, and it's in this section, 13 through 18, which means that its last electrons are going to be p-type, because I can divide the periodic table into four blocks. The first two groups or columns are the S block. Groups 13 through 18, the end over here, are called the P block. The boys in the middle, 3 through 12, are the D block. And the boys on the bottom, to save space, are called the F block. Now, going through sulfur, I know it has the first and second ring full. In the first ring, the first period, I only have two elements, hydrogen and helium, which means that it's going to only have S-type electrons. So hydrogen would look like this, one S and an up arrow. Helium would look like this, one S with an up and down arrow. Now when I get to the second ring, I have S, P, and in P I have PX, PY, and PZ, right? Because the P's go divided up into three groups on the X, Y, and Z axis. Now, the first, when we fill the electrons, we fill the lowest energy first. S has less energy than P. All the P's have the same amount of energy, so I'm going to singularly fill them before pairing them. So, looking at the periodic table, my next element, the first one in the second period, is lithium, so I put an up arrow for that. The second element in the group two, in period two is beryllium, so I'm going to put a down arrow. They're both in the S area. Notice I filled in both S's. Now I'm in the P block with boron. So boron is going to get an up arrow. Now remember, instead of pairing anything, I'm going to singularly fill them. So when I go to carbon, I go like this. And when I go to nitrogen, I go like this. But can uh, it be any way? It could be any way as long as the arrows point in the same direction. After okay? I can do all of them down or all of them up. After the, after the S. After the S. All the P's need to be filled individually, singularly, with the same direction. Now, you can also see where I have spaces for chemical bonding. When I get to nitrogen, you can see that I have three spaces left to fill with electrons. Now, we're going to go all the way to sulfur. Sense? Oxygen, I'm going to put it like this. That's the first one that gets paired. Fluorine is paired. Notice there's one space left. That's why fluorine is in group 17. It has one space for bonding and down. Okay, now I'm in the third period, right? So I got my three S my 3px, my 3py, and my 3pz, okay? So next okay. up is sodium. Wouldn't magnesium Magnesium. Be an S? Yes, known as magnesium is an S oh. after sodium. First sodium gets an up arrow, then magnesium gets it down. <laughs> Aluminum, up arrow and 3px. Silicon, up arrow and 3px. Uh, and then phosphorus, up arrow, and 3PZ. And finally, I'm at my sulfur. I'm going to put a down arrow like that. And that's my orbital notation, right? Showing my principal quantum number, which are these one, twos, and threes. My angular momentum, which is an S, P type. We could have a D or an F angular momentum, but Though in the second and third period, we don't have these and Fs. And then we have the magnetic quantum number, which shows us the uh, orientation in three-dimensional space, which is my X, Y, and Z. And my spin is being indicated by an up and down arrow. Now, this all gets messy, right? If I keep making arrows and arrows and arrows, okay? So we have the next thing, which is basically electron configuration notation where I use numbers to represent the principal quantum number, letters represent angular momentum, superscript represents electrons. Notice I'm not including the magnetic quantum number in the spin. It's not indicated. So what that means is if I look at sulfur, 
1 S2, 2 S2, right? I just have my, I have my principal quantum number, my mm -hmm. angular momentum, and my electrons up here. All the P's from the second show are lumped together in 2 P6 like that. I did not indicate my magnetic quantum number. There's no X, Y, and Z. There's no spin indicated. I just lump all the P's together. Then I have my 3S2 and my 3P4, right? Okay, all the P's were lumped together over here. Okay? And that is my electron configuration notation, which simplifies it. We're going to simplify that one more time with noble gas notation. Okay, noble gas notation says, you know what, at the end of the day, the only thing I really care about are the electrons that come after the previous noble gas. So I'm going to take the previous noble gas of sulfur, which is neon, put it in brackets, like this, NE in brackets, and then I put what came after the neon. Right? Because at the end of the day, only the electrons that are involved after, chemical after the noble gas are involved in chemical bonding. Okay, stop.